All right, so we're going to talk about the driver's information center here, and we're going to start on the steering wheel. First of all, your cruise control buttons are located over here on the left. So this is cruise on or off, and if I toggle it, there is off, there it's on, same button. Okay, over here is your cancel to cancel your cruise control, and then of course set is up, uh, and then if you want to increase the miles per hour while the cruise is set, you can use that up or down, and this is of course resume. And this is your gap setting. So if I show you the gaps, so there are four lines. And if I press the button, the lines disappear. There's a slight, uh, slight leg between when you push a button and the lines appear or disappear. So just be a little patient. Okay. Uh, down here is your lane centering control. Okay. So that one, we see a little steering wheel on there. That actually measures from the left to the right side of the lines and tries to keep you, uh, you know, like smack dab in the middle. Um, so you, if you turn that off, the stream will disappear. So you turn it on, the stream wheel comes on. And then um, over here is where your, I ah, can't see it, your lane keeping assist button is, is right down at the end of the stick right here. Okay, and that doesn't come on unless you're moving, so I can't get it on right now, but you're, you would have lines that would appear on the left and the right side there. Whoops, went out of focus. Okay. Uh, moving on down here, of course you got your volume down, your volume up, and then mute. Okay, over on the right side of the steering wheel, these top controls all control the driver's information center. So that's how you access information in there. And this little indicator over there uh, tells you how many screens are available for you to toggle through. And you would use this toggle switch up or down to do that. Okay, and this is the menu button here, and this of course is the back button. And then to select something, you would press this down. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a minute. This is your voice activated navigation, so you would push it and then you could uh, use your voice to activate the navigation. You got your phone uh, on and off, or you know, uh, to dial something and to hang up. And then um, you have some cursor controls here for your media system. Okay, so let's go back up to here in a minute, and I'm just going to be using this this uh, menu button, and I'll be going, when it goes up and down, I'm pushing this lever up or down, and then that's the back button, and if I select something, I'm pushing OK. So here we go. Let's go to the menu. Now, um, let's go back up to the top here. Okay, so... The first one allows you to select which screens, which seven screens you toggle through. You can select seven of these. Anything that's checkmarked is already on. Okay, uh, for instance, let's say I wanted Eco Coach on. Right now I've got seven selected and it won't let me do it in an eighth. So I have to take one off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to turn off Intelligent 4-Wheel Drive because I'm not going to be off-roading right now. And I'm going to turn on Eco Coach. So these seven here, you got trailer light check, seat belts, auto startup, now playing, and then it's back to the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to push the back button now and use, I'm going to go one more. Okay, now I'm going to use that little toggle switch going up and down. And you can see the blue line on the right moving up or down and I can toggle through these seven screens. This, by the way, is called the calm screen. All right. So then it makes it really easy for you to get, and after a few seconds, all those lines disappear and all you see is the screen you selected. So if I go back to this one and I just let it go for a little bit, then it gets a little bigger, a little easier to see. Okay, I can go to audio here. And uh, you can select your AM, FM, or Sirius, or Bluetooth if you have it connected. Hit the back button. 
You can go to navigation here. From here, you can select some different destinations and, and then tell the navigation to go there. Uh, you can uh, access your phone settings here. And then you can go just to regular settings. And then the, your choice there is to see oil life. All right. I keep going back here. Let's go to display setup. Okay, here's where you can change your uh, speedometers, your digital speedometer that shows up uh, right here to uh, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. All right, we're just gonna use the back button here until we're back at the main screen. Now when it says press okay for details, if I do that, then it gives me, um, like my acceleration and de deceleration speed, it gives you some more information. Okay. Um, and that is your driver's information system. So let's hop over and let's do the infotainment system. So um, we'll go to the home screen here. Okay. All right. So on, on this home screen here, you've got all your shortcuts down here. So you've got audio, phone, navigation, apps, and settings that you can access at any time. Um, it's going to show you, it can show you the navigation screen as long as, as well as your media that's playing. Um, phone information would appear down here if you added a phone. So you see quite a bit of information all at one time. Um, let's go into audio real, just real quick. We're not going to all of those. But here's where you can uh, pick your uh, presets. And by the way, to do a preset, all you do is select the radio station you want and then press and hold and it sets. Right? So if I use my tune button, which is down here, that's one of the physical buttons, and I rotate it, you notice the radio station is changing. So I'm going to go to 101.5, don't know what it is, don't care, and I'm going to push and hold right here. And there it's set to 101.5, so it's that easy. Okay, and then you can, of course, go to sources here, and you can manually go through and select things uh, from the screen instead of the driver's information center. There is no phone connected, but if you did, this is where all your phone settings would be. You want navigation, that's right there. It's a nice clear screen. There's your search. Okay, so up here you're gonna notice there are three different uh, temperatures. There are 65, there's 79, there's another 65. These two are what your temperature is currently set to on each side, which is nice. You don't have to look down. You can look at, see it right on your screen. This is the outdoor temperature and of course your time. All right, so now I'm gonna go. It, now that the screen has become full screen because I've waited for a while, um, I can go to the home screen and go back to where I was, or I can press on the control button, and that'll also bring up the uh, keep the navigation open, but keep up bring up these other settings. All right, you can go into apps here. You can another place you can add a device. Um, you can find different mobile apps. If I click on that, there's um, I don't have any, nothing is synced here, um, but you could you could use that to find the apps on your phone that will work. And then you have the Sirius XM Travel Link, which does come standard with the, with the uh, Copilot 360 Assist Plus, which gives you these things, traffic lists, fuel prices, movie listings, weather, sports info, ski, oops, sports info, ski conditions, parking, and weather. And then we can scroll, oops, let me, um, Scroll over here, and then there's your subscription info. This is the back button up there. Okay, and then we can go into settings. Here, you this vehicle comes equipped with ambient lighting, and so you can, of course, choose the color that you want simply by clicking on it. And then you can set the intensity. That is a really cool graphic. I like how they did that. All right, we'll go back to settings for a minute, and then we're going to go... Um, to the home screen. All right, so now um, down below here, I mentioned the physical controls before, okay? Um, but we're going to take a look at the camera view. So if I'm showing the screen here, I'm pushing that camera view. And I, right now I have the front camera on. This is equipped with the front camera and then a 360 view, which I really, really like. Okay, if I press this button up here, I get some options. Now I'm getting the 360 view, but if I press this, I get a much bigger screen and just the front view. And if I press it again and I do this, you notice the little bend right here? It's giving you a much wider view. So your bumper kind of looks like it's in a V, but you get a much wider angle. Okay? 
if I go into reverse, the camera automatically switches to reverse. Okay, and I, again, I can press this and I can see a bigger view. And then if I press this one, it gives me that wider view. We kind of get that V shape again. So really nice camera features. Okay, if I click on the plus sign here, it magnifies and drops out the other guidelines and leaves me the center guideline, which is really handy for uh, backing up to a hitch. Now, that being said, there are two different versions of the Co-Pilot 360. So there is the standard Co-Pilot 360, which comes with rear view camera, the blind spot information system, the lane keeping assist, the auto emergency braking with pre-collision detection, and auto high beam lighting. And if you upgrade and go to the Assist Plus, so the Co-Pilot Assist Plus, in addition to those five, you get adaptive cruise control, which is full adaptive cruise control. You can come to a complete stop, or the vehicle will, will come to a complete stop on its own. You have evasive steering, which gives you extra steering power in an emergency. Reverse braking assist, so if it senses something behind you, um, it will uh, brake for you if you don't brake fast enough. And then uh, enhanced uh, active park assist. It also comes uh, with a blind spot with trailer coverage. So if I want that, if I'm pulling a trailer, I can extend my blind spot in my mirrors to cover my trailer. And then also you have hill descent control, which I showed you the button for that earlier. And then um, there's one more feature that isn't on this vehicle, but um, is another option to add to the Co-Pilot 360 Assist Plus, and that is called Pro Trailer Backup Assist. And that is just really neat. They actually give you a separate button that's down somewhere down in here, and you can, um, if you turn that on, you actually control your steering wheel with a little dial down here. And basically you turn the dial in the direction you want the trailer to go and the wheel will do what it needs to do to make the trailer go in that direction. So um, that, but that is an additional uh, feature. Um, I know for sure it's available on the Ford Expedition. Um, I haven't checked to see if it's available on the Explorer yet, but that's, uh, that's the only feature that's missing from this particular vehicle on the, with the Assist Plus on there. Um, and then, um, the voice active navigation is part of that assist plus package and then so is the traffic in weather and sports and movie listings with Siri. So all those things come with the assist plus. Okay so then we have this drive mode button okay and all you do is rotate this knob and I'll show you up on the dashboard what happens. So if I rotate it I'm in normal it gives you a nice cool graphic. If I go to another one okay then I'm in normal and if I go to another one, I'm an eco. If I give you another one, we go into sport, which I like. That really tightens up your steering and, and your transmission points, your shift points. You got tow haul. Okay, so uh, one. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different modes. So we will, of course, go back to normal. But that's a cool graphic on the dashboard as you switch between the modes.